Hello and thank you for joining the Revise Interactive Forms tutorial. I'm Thomas and I'll be your guide, taking you step-by-step -step through the process of utilizing and incorporating the Revise Interactive Forms application. This platform simplifies the process for residents to submit a wide range of forms, such as permits, dog licenses, or requests and services. Once submitted, these forms are automatically directed to the appropriate departments, and residents can easily track their progress and receive status updates. Additionally, your staff can effortlessly create numerous forms using this application. Let's get started. To commence, you'll need to access the link provided by the revised team in the support portal, which will look something like this. You will also receive a username and a temporary password, which you can update once you log in. Upon clicking the provided link, you will be redirected to the login page. It's important to note that this application operates independently, with its own set of users distinct from those on your revised website. Consequently, you'll be required to establish new login credentials for all your creators and editors within this platform. Now you can proceed to log into the platform using the credentials you have been provided with. Now that you have successfully logged in, let's take a quick tour of the dashboard. The dashboard comprises all your submitted forms and includes a filter section to help you find and search through them as needed. At the bottom, you will find a list of all the forms that have been submitted, which you can arrange by clicking on any of the table headers. To view the form submissions, simply click on the form name, a feature we will explore in more detail later in this video. Next, we have the main navigation. On the right-hand side, you will see your username along with links to update your account information and sign out. Moving on, we have the various sections we will be working with. Users, where you can add and remove users as needed. Departments for adding or removing departments as required. Reports, which is also the dashboard we are currently on. Forms, where you will find all the forms you have created. Finally, we have bookables, which you will only see if you have purchased the revised bookables application. This feature allows you to create forms with payment methods, enabling users to submit payments for booking venues or similar services. A brief recap. The dashboard is the initial screen you'll encounter upon logging into the application. It features a filterable search function and displays the most recent submissions from of your forms. Revise Interactive Forms application allows you to effortlessly create, customize, and distribute online forms for users to submit. Now let's discuss the processes of adding, removing, and editing a user within the application. These actions can be found under the Users tab, where you can access a list of all current users in your system. Whether you choose to add or edit a user, the interface is the same. So let's begin by adding a new user. Click on the Create a User button, which will open a new page for entering the user's information. Start by entering their first name, last name, email, which will be their login set a password, and confirm the password. Next, you'll need to assign a role to the user. There are four different roles available. The admin role, which grants full access, allowing users to perform actions such as adding, deleting, and editing forms, viewing submissions, adding and removing other users, and more. The department admin role. Users with this role can access everything within the specific department that they are assigned to. For instance, if someone only needs access to HR forms, you can assign them to the HR department. They will only be able to view, create, and respond to forms within that department. A user is assigned to a specific department and share similarities with department admins. However, they cannot create forms. They will be able to view and respond to forms within their designated department. And finally, guests. Guests have limited privileges and can only view information they cannot create or respond to forms. To modify a particular user, just revisit the Users tab and select the Edit option located next to the username. If necessary, you can also delete the user. Now that we have all our users in place, the next phase of our process will revolve around creating departments and assigning users to their appropriate departments. It's important to note any role besides admin cannot do anything within the app until they are assigned to a department. We will also explain how to assign a user to a particular department. This way, you can control their access and permissions effectively. 
Let's start by setting up our departments on the Departments tab. Click on Create a Department to initiate the addition of our first department. Begin by providing the name for the department. Following that, input an email address. We strongly recommend using no reply at revise.com for this field. While you can use your own email, experience has shown that emails sent to spam are more likely when clients use their personal email addresses in this field. Now, proceed to add users to the Parks and Rec department that we are establishing. Choose the users you want to include in this department. Remember, the actions users can perform within the department depend on the roles assigned to them. On right side, you'll find escalation policy exclusions. Opting for yes in any of these options will result in delaying emails, and no emails will be sent out during the specified days or times. These options are great if you or anyone within this department do not want to receive emails on certain days or after hours, which is relevant to your time zone. Having established our department, let's explore the available options. Initially, there's the escalation policy. This feature allows you to route a submitted form to the next designated person in line. It's important to note that this option requires a minimum of two users to be functional. It's a straightforward process. Just drag the users over and arrange them in the sequence corresponding to how they should receive the escalated forms submitted within the associated department. Additionally, you have the flexibility to adjust the time lag between each user. Next, we have holidays. You can add a holiday and would correspond with the escalation policy exclusions for holidays. Moving on, we come to the email feature. These emails are dispatched following specific submissions to administrators, editors, or the users who submitted a form. The emails section operates as a set and forget option. We've already configured eight standard emails that work seamlessly in various scenarios. If you prefer, you can customize or create new emails by clicking on the Edit or Create New Email options. Simply fill out the form and choose the options that suit your needs. On the right side, you'll find variables to select from. Just copy and paste them into the email. It's crucial to avoid altering the blue headers in the emails as they contain links to the submissions. Unless you are familiar with the process, we do not recommend making changes to them. Lastly, you have the choice to edit and delete. It's very important to understand that deleting a department will lead to the permanent removal of all forms created within it, and absolutely no data can be restored. Now that we've set up our users department and assigned users to the department, we can begin creating forms. From the main navigation, click on Forms. Start by clicking on Create Form. Here it'll provide your form with a name, and select the department under which you want it to reside. The Requires Bookable option is available if you have the Bookables application enabled. For this example, let's keep it as No. The Completion URL, which is optional, allows you to redirect the submitter to a page of your choice, whether on your website or elsewhere, after they successfully submit the form. The Completion message, which is optional, will be displayed after the user successfully submits the form. Lastly, there's the Caption option which we highly recommend setting to yes to prevent spam submissions. After creating our form, you'll notice that its status is marked as inactive. We will activate it once we complete building the form. Click on Build to start the construction of our form and its components. Here we can build out our form. On the left side, our form elements and fields are available. Elements are instrumental in forming your form layout. A separator provides division between elements, and rows serve as containers for fields below. The text element provides a space where you can incorporate paragraphs of text and other markup using the rich text editor. The page break, similar to the separator but without any styles, facilitates transitions. Fields encompass various input elements, such as text fields, checkboxes, and radio buttons. Before dragging any fields to the right to initiate form construction, it's essential to include rows, no field can exist outside a row. So, drag over a row to add some fields. We recommend limiting fields to four per row, as exceeding this can clutter the row and hinder readability. To edit a field, simply click on it to modify its properties. Each field has distinct properties, depending on its type. Let's look into each field and explore the available options. For all fields, you can make them required and adjust the column size. Similar options, like the label identifying the field, are visible when editing each field. The help text is valuable for providing additional assistance to the submitter and is placed under the input. The file field is a single file upload field. 
If you want submitters to upload more than one file, drag over additional file fields from the left column. Changes made to inputs are live and visible once you close the pop-up. Save your changes by clicking Save in the bottom right of the page. Next is the email field. This field can only be associated with the submitter's email, crucial for the application to identify the submitter's email and send emails as needed. The date field is self-explanatory and cannot be anything else. The checkbox allows the addition of options for the submitter to select one or more. The text field is versatile and can be used for various purposes. Specify a text field as primary first name or as primary last name to include the submitter's name in emails. The text area is for submitting more content. You can increase the size by the increasing the number of rows. The select allows multiple or single selections by the submitter. Check options as needed and add associated options at the bottom. The radio group, like the checkbox, permits the submitter to select only one option. Add options at the bottom as needed. Finally, the phone field is exclusively for phone numbers and cannot be utilized for anything else. A quick reminder, the date, email, and phone fields are restricted to their label purposes, while others can be adapted as needed. After saving the form, proceed to activate it by accessing the form properties and choosing the active option from the drop-down menu. This action will activate the form and generate a shareable URL. Copy the link by clicking on the provided option. Opening the link in a new tab allows you to preview the live version of the form. Additionally, on the forms page, you can obtain the end code for integrating the form into your website. The view public form list displays all active forms for public viewing. If there's a form you wish to keep private, refrain from activating it. You can share the public form list page with others to access all your active forms in one centralized location. We simulated a form submission, so let us take a look at how a submission would come in. Navigate to the forms page and observe the submitted form. Clicking on the form name provides access to the submitted information, including details from the submitter. At the bottom of the page, various options are available for updating the submission. These include changing the status, priority, due date, assigned person, and department. You can also add attachments and post new comments. The Make Post Public option allows you to share changes publicly or limit them to administrators through the private setting. Choose the Send Manual Email on Save option to send out a selected email from the drop-down menu upon submission. As an admin, you can view both private and public comments which you can see here. Having created and tested the form, you can now share it with anyone you choose. With this, it brings us to the end of our tutorial on the Interactive Forms application. This platform simplifies the process for residents to submit a wide range of applications, such as permits, dog licenses, or requests and services. Additionally, your staff can effortlessly create numerous forms using this application. Should you have any questions, please visit the Revise Support Portal at support.revise.com. Once again, thank you, and we trust that you now possess all the necessary information to effortlessly create forms tailored to your specific requirements.